Hello and welcome to Garf 247. I'm Eric. I'm Matt. And tonight we're going to be presenting an encore presentation of the 2024 Pioneer Award ceremony. It's an award that the foundation gives out annually to those who have made a substantial contribution to the horror genre or to cinema as a whole, people whose work has made a profound impact. Since 2020, past winners of this award have included Dwayne Jones, Chili Billy Cardill, and Wes Craven. Tonight, we add another name to that list, someone who has been a member of this profound horror community through George Romero since 1968. Mr. Rush Striner joins us esteemed list tonight due to the fact that he was there at the beginning. He's Johnny. They're coming to get you, Barbara. How iconic is something like that that has resonated for over 56 years? Rush Striner is a wonderful human being. He was there from the beginning with George who helped get Night of the Living Dead off the ground and brought the character of Johnny to life, gave us chills when we first see Bill Heinzman. And Russ is taking his rightful place with these other horror icons in this group. Yeah, and you think about it, uh, Russ, as you mentioned, he was one of the original uh, founding Image 10 partners, one of the original guys that threw their 600 bucks and got the ball rolling made a horror classic in Western PA. What the hell, right? And um, he was also uh, part of the Leighton Image, the uh, commercial production uh, company that uh, George and John Russo were a part of in the late 60s. And uh, yeah, like you said, man, he was there for the beginning and he was immortalized uh, behind the lens of George A. Romero as Johnny, the obnoxious brother. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who, you know, drives 200 mi miles out into the country, uh, doesn't even remember what his dead man, dead dad looks like. You know? <laughs> I mean, how yeah. many, how many brother and sister pairs were tortured late night after watching none of the living dead when an older brother was teasing a little sisters, they're coming to get you insert name here <laughs> and would just terrify a younger sibling. Uh, all because Rush Striner just delivered that line perfectly and brought that character to life and showing up at the end to actually come and get her. So, uh -huh. you, you know, for for those of us that have known Russ for a while and have seen him at conventions, just one of the nicest folks that you could meet. Always, always happy to meet the fans. Always jovial with the conversations and recollect recollections of George and the time making Night of the Living Dead and those commercials back in the 60s and 70s. And for those of you, if you haven't gotten a chance to meet Russ, go do it. He's been, I think they were just out a couple weeks ago, uh, Living Dead weekend. They were out in Arizona, I think last weekend. So the Night of the Living Dead crew is still getting around, folks. If you haven't met him, go meet Russ Striner very soon. Absolutely. And uh, before we get into this uh, presentation of the uh, 2024 Pio Pioneer Awards ceremony, Oh, I, I want to mention that uh, presenting Mr. Striner is uh, Judy O'Day, Suze Romero, and Gary Striner as well. Um, and I think the uh, program runs roughly 40 minutes. And also, uh, I want to say thanks to uh, Gino Blair, who uh, did the editing on, on this program. And also, we missed uh, 2021 winner uh, Richard Ricci as well. Don't want to forget uh, the Rev. <laughs> so i guess without any further ado let's go ahead and uh roll into the presentation awesome so we're here tonight or this afternoon to to share with you the fans a pioneer in our community, in our horror space, as a filmmaker, as Russ Reiner. And we're all here to celebrate the George Romero Pioneer Award, and this is the fifth one. The first one was Billy Chili Cardill, which he was amazing, obviously. Uh, George Romero would not have been George Romero without Mr. Cardill. 
The second one was given to Dwayne Jones. And then we did Richard Ritchie, who was, uh, again, a beautiful human being, a pioneer, and a good friend of all of us. And then the fourth was Wes Craven. Jonathan Craven and Ia, his, his wife, came to Pittsburgh to take a, you know, take a look at the archive. Uh, we're going to be giving uh, Russ the award on Friday next week in the library at the Hillman. Um, it's sort of the official uh, presentation of this uh, very heavy, heavy award. We're here to celebrate his, his life, his career, uh, everything he's given to us as a, a pioneer for uh, the city of Pittsburgh and uh, the film world at large. So uh, with no, no further ado, I am going to introduce... They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it! You're ignorant! And now for the beautiful Judy of day. Hallelujah. Everybody's reality is different, isn't it? What we perceive is our reality. My reality back in 1967, 66, actually before that, was Pittsburgh, was the dream of becoming an actress. I've always, always wanted to do that. I found the Pittsburgh Playhouse when I was only, I think, in seventh grade. I get off the trolley, number 38, out of Mount Lebanon, drive all the way over to uh, the Pittsburgh Playhouse on the east end of town. And I can remember a wonderful teacher, her name was Miss Hardwick. And I thought she was just the best. I said, this is the only thing in the world I really want to do. Well, who should come along down the line, taking one of the courses, <laughs> and to this day I wish I could remember what it was, but Ross and I first met in a course at the Pittsburgh Playhouse. That was our introduction. Little did I know that our reality was going to be so spectacular. I went off to Hollywood because who made pictures of Pittsburgh? I went off to Hollywood. I was there a while, got a wonderful call from Carl Harden, who played uh, Harry Truman in the film, saying, you want to come back to Pittsburgh and want to audition? George, Jack Russo, George Romero, Russ Stryker, make the movie. Just for fun, I want to come back. And I thought, heck yes. I hopped on an airplane, left Hollywood, came back to Pittsburgh, auditioned, and my life has been changed forever. Russ became my brother. Our reality, it really was a pioneer reality because all of us involved in that film were pioneers we began it we began the, the the zombie craze and we had no idea we were doing it but oh my god what fun we had russ and i over the years i've grown closer i've gotten to know him better this has been a wonderful life and you all have contributed to it. You have given us a legacy, and we thank you for that. We, we were pioneers, hopefully for you, and gave you something that you love. Thank you. And now, Jim Simonella. So I have a question for everybody here. Raise your hand if Night of the Living Dead changed your life. Yeah, probably. Yeah. This is a very hard act to follow these folks 
I was not involved in the making of Night Living Dead, of course. I was not even a year old when they were making it. But I've always felt that film was made for me when I saw it. And it changed my life, became a big part of my life. And in all my research and looking into the film and meeting the other actors and tracking people down over the years, uh, I learned the story of the making of the film from you know, all the various viewpoints, from everybody who was like Gary, who was involved in it from the very beginning, uh, as just the concept that we're going to make a feature film in Pittsburgh. As Gary said, nobody did that at the time. So uh, that was, they were really going out on a limb. And uh, to, to all the extras who said the same thing, uh, you know, these, these guys asked us to be in a movie and we just went out and did it. And we were saying, who makes a movie in Pittsburgh? But they went out there and did their best as the first living dead in a feature film and had nothing to draw on other than uh, that they were asked to do that and they went out and did their best. I'm sure everybody at that time, 1966, 67, would have liked to be in maybe Gone with the Winds, but they were being asked to be in Night of the Flesh Eaters. <laughs> Monster Flick, which eventually became Night of the Living Dead. And of course, in, that, in, in all of those stories and all of the, um, uh, the discussions with people who were there in various capacities, uh, of course, it became known that George Romero is the, as it was described to me by Bill Heinzman, I think the best, George Romero is the center, he's the nerve center of that movie. Everybody contributed and supported his vision, but he's the guy that put that together, was the one who made it what it is. And, you know, we, uh, of course, everybody respects that. But another name that was always told to me um, by everybody was Russ Dreiner. And I be began to become aware of this, not only Russ being the spark, the first business partner that George had that enabled these two to trailblaze the way for others to follow in independent filmmaking worldwide, um, as well as the Pittsburgh Film Office and, and now the booming business of Hollywood films and productions being done in Pittsburgh. But. Um, I started to understand the huge Striner family influence on Night of the Living Dead. From his mother coming out, Russ and Gary's mother coming out and playing a ghoul, their aunt Norma playing a ghoul, all these familiar faces that I always saw in, in, in the film, you know, who's that ghoul, who's that ghoul, and it turns out it's all the, the Striners. <laughs> to, uh, to uh, Ma Striner's car being co-opted to be the car that the famous Pontiac Le Mans that I don't think anybody would care about Pontiac Le Mans from 1967 except for Night of the Living Dead. It all comes from that spark and that's the, you know, the pioneering spirit and it changed all of our lives. And uh, uh, like I said, it's, it's hard to follow these folks, but uh, the only way to say it is thank you for everything you've done. Without no further ado, I am going to introduce um, Cornelia Tancheva, who is the Hillman University Librarian and the Director of the University Library System. So, Thank you, Suze. And this is probably the first time in the state that somebody has pronounced my last name correctly, so thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. I will be very brief. I just wanted to say welcome and to make sure that you all know how excited we are about the fact that we have George Romero's archive, that we are building the premier horror studies archive in the country, hopefully in the world, and how excited we are about our collaboration with GARF. They're our good friends and uh, we welcome events like that. We welcome other people who are interested in donating their archives to us or working with us on events so that we can celebrate this 
wonderful, wonderful area of horror studies that touches pretty much every facet of our lives. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Cornelia. And next on the docket is uh, Ben Rubin, who's the Horror Studies Collection Coordinator and Special Collections. Ben Rubin. Thank you, Suze. And uh, I just want to first echo Cornelia about how it's always so wonderful to uh, partner with the GARF every year on this. We work with them a lot, but this is really a highlight of our partnership. Um, and of course, congratulations to Russ. You really deserve this. You are a pioneer. Um, you know, I don't think we would be here to even talk about the George Romero archive if it really wasn't for the work that Russ was doing. Um, of course, so many of us know Russ from his turn as Johnny in Night of the Living Dead. Uh, immediately, very intimate relationship with him as we see him bickering with his on stage or on film uh, sister, Judy O'Day, playing Barbara. Feels very, you know, natural. Um, and then, of course, he delivers his iconic line in his lilting voice as he teases her, they're coming to get you, Barbara. Repeated often, oftentimes by fan, horror fans for the past 55 years, I'm sure for the next 55 and the 55 after that. I know Russ loves to hear it from everybody. Um, uh, you know, but it, it really is uh, one of those lines now that's become part of the American film lexicon. You know, Rosebud, you're going to need a bigger boat. We're coming to get you, Barbara. And much like the shark in Jaws uh, or Hannibal Lecter, you know, Russ was only on state on screen for a very, very short period of time, yet uh, had an outsized impact. There's no way that we could imagine I Living Dead without Johnny, that opening scene, or his uh, iconic return later to storm the farmhouse. Um, but really, it's Russ's behind the scenes work that is so important. We really would not have a film industry without the work that Russ did as he brought together the motley crew of film and theater students, mostly hanging out at uh, the Pittsburgh Playhouse to form Latent Image and go into the burgeoning new field of television here in Pittsburgh to actually found uh, Latent Image and have people come and work in this medium in Pittsburgh, not in LA, not in Chicago, not New York. Uh, he continued working in uh, commercials and in advertising and ensuring this industry was here in Pittsburgh as a rising new industry, even though we're seeing the steel industry leave and what had defined us for so long, we could now have a rise of a new creative field. Uh, he founded the Pittsburgh Film Office and that continues to have such a huge impact today, ensuring that we do have film coming here to Pittsburgh, The Dark Knight Rises, Mindhunter, none of these would have come to Pittsburgh without the work of Russ. Um, also, it's really nice to have a Pioneer Award uh, this year where our recipient is here with us and that it is Russ. If you met him, you know he's one of the most genuine and nice people that you'll ever encounter. His mind is also like a steel trap. I don't know how you remember everything as well as you do, but he is an absolute font of history and remembrance. And it's always uh, wonderful to sit and talk with him and hear about the early days of Leighton Image and all of this history of Pittsburgh. Um, so thank you, Russ, for all that you've done. Congratulations. And uh, this is a uh, you know, certainly well-deserved and long overdue award for you. Thanks, Ben Rubin. Um, and next um, is the intrepid and beautiful Bonnie Heinzman. I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> um, thank you for inviting me and including me in this celebration, Russ. First, I want to say congratulations to you. It was 1970 when I first met you at the Leighton Image. And it was a wonderful experience for me to watch you young men making movies and commercials. You all wore many hats in those days, and productions were very much different then. You changed hats often, and there weren't so many people involved, and it really felt like a family. I sort of grew up there. As years continued, you and George, Jack, your brother Gary, Paul, Mike, my husband Bill, my brother Nick, and many others went on to make so many other projects much success. There were also special times when you all worked together again and um, that was pretty amazing. How lucky I was to have had the opportunity to watch the magic of filmmaking back in those days and the families you all created. 
I'm wishing the best always, and thanks for having me. Seems so congratulations. Um, and now we're going to show um, a video of Don Keyser because she couldn't come today. Um, she had a conflict, so she recorded something. Hi, I'm Don Keyser, the director of the Pittsburgh Film Office. Congratulations, Russ. I'm so thrilled that you're being recognized for your dedication, your passion, and your creativity for the film industry in southwestern Pennsylvania. You had a dream. You made it a reality. And in 1968, when you, along with your friends, created Night of the Living Dead, you started the film industry as we know it today in southwestern Pennsylvania. It's true when they say there would not be a film industry in southwestern Pennsylvania without the work of Russ Streiner. There would not be a film office without the work of Russ Streiner. So thank you for all you've done. Thank you for your passion, your dedication, your continued commitment to this day to see Southwestern Pennsylvania as a powerhouse in the film and television industry. We've had over 200 projects film here, bringing with it over $2.5 billion in new money to this region's economy and being responsible for, for over 5,000 people having employment in this industry. That's all as a direct tribute to the work that you have done and continue to do to this day. Congratulations on this well-deserved honor. I will look forward to congratulating you in person very soon. Enjoy your time with your friends and family and have a great rest of your event. Thank you so much and congratulations, Russ. We love you. Gary Steiner. I always like to go first because they've all now said most of what I was going to say. Uh, so it makes me look stupid and not a guy that knows his own brother. Recently been spending as an older guy a lot of time thinking back on the past and thinking about how the past um, you know, made the present and will make the future. And um, you know, one person uh, that is in all those areas is my brother Russ. I decided to do a little research on what is a pioneer. You know, we all take the word very much for granted. Pioneer, oh, it's a pioneer. Um, so I, I, I dug in a little bit and I found um, some definitions that pioneers are leaders, they're risk takers, uh, they're selfless, assertive, and forward thinking. It's a pretty wide range of things. And uh, this year's recipient of the award is all of those. Every one of them. If you lived in Pittsburgh, this is now we're talking about in the 50s and even early 60s. Um, if you came from a middle class family, the likelihood was you were going to work in the mill, you know, or some related thing to the mill. That's just what most of my friends did, most people did. And Russ didn't want to do that, so he figured that maybe he should go and get an ed education. He went to college. How, how, how long did you, how long were you in college? Fifteen years. <laughs> Fifteen years. And, and I don't want to get the chronology wrong, but it doesn't matter. The point is, as I think, to help pay for college, um, he drove a truck for a meatpacking company. <laughs> and of all places, he came to Pitt uh, for that education. and. Uh, it didn't work for him, and so he left and, and, uh, and joined the Pittsburgh Playhouse. And through that he, he met a couple of people, like the Richie Cousins, um, and that turned into meeting George Romero. And these guys just gelled and became kind of a pack, and they would, you know, be in coffee shops at four in the morning, writing, and, and fantasizing, really, uh, about what they were going to do with the rest of their lives. They were all uh, searching for the same thing. They all had, had that passion to create. So they wrote scripts, and, and of course, since they write these scripts, they got to produce them, and they got a little bit of help from Monroe, George's uncle, and 
uh, George and Uncle had a little cash and bought a camera for them and some film, and off they went to do expostulation, a trilogy of, of films. George actually asked Russ if he would act in this project that he was uh, uh, working on called Expostulations. Russ said, I will. <laughs> but what also happened is it recruited me to come out and be an extra on that day. Well, now, all right, now we have these ideas, now we have these films, now we're out starting to shoot, we need to have a company. I can fill in this, that out of all of them, the only qualified one to actually run a company was Russ. So, uh, George certainly wasn't that guy. Uh, he got a little help from, from Richard Richie. I think Richard kind of edged the business on the middle along a little bit. And Russ was, once again, the leader uh, of that group to keep him on track, provide insurance for, uh, you know, having to go into buildings to shoot and doing uh, loans and, and, and all that sort of business stuff was on Russ's shoulders. He had no training for that, none. It all came out of gut instinct. He did a pretty good job of it, I would say. He pulled uh, a company through, but at some point along the way, that desire to get back into filmmaking, because yes, we were making films, but we were making other people's films, there was a desire to be serious about doing a feature production at production in Night of the Living Dead. Point again, this is all pointing back to, you know, all the aspects of selflessness and all the things that I mentioned in the beginning that, that, that are part of the makeup of a pioneer. He put all that stuff aside, which makes him even more of a pioneer, to actually make the company run, and then just kind of arbitrarily he gets to play this part of Johnny. Now he has one of the iconic lines in pop culture history. We're talking about pop culture history. Think about that for a minute, Mr. Pioneer Award winner. <laughs> it's, when I do think about it, it's quite surreal. <clears throat> it's like it happened to somebody else. But it didn't. <laughs> it didn't. And I'm really, 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 really glad that that did happen to you. Lots of people play Pioneer. Lots of people um, have the money to be a pioneer, uh, but Russ did it out of heart and soul completely and, and unabashedly, and he still does it to this very day. If there's anybody that deserves a Pioneer Award, Russ brought production to Pittsburgh. Uh, he went on in 1990, he went on to form the Pittsburgh Film Office, which has brought billions, billions, of dollars in the community. So Pioneer again created an environment in Pittsburgh where filmmaking was taken seriously. Before Russ and George and, and, the, and the, the Richies filmmaking, I mean, there were people that you know did industrial films. One guy did industrial films and that was it. And now, what you see happening is largely due to this man. You know, he's not done. He's now got a project with John Russo that's uh, in development and could quite very possibly become a film that gets done. And so he's going to be back in the trenches again. And I want to say thank you. The best to you, Russ, and thank you for everything you've done for this whole community and particularly for me. Thank you, Mary. So, Russ Stoner, it is my honor as the president and founder of the George A. Romero Foundation as a person who loves you, to give you this award. George Romero loved you, I love you. Congratulations.
Dankeschön. Thank you very much, Suzanne. Thank you to the George Romero Foundation. Um, thank you to Gary, to Bonnie, to all of you for showing up. Um, uh, I did not imagine that I would be here in a wheelchair, but um, at least temporarily, it's the most convenient way for me to get around. Um, I want everyone to understand where uh, the place where I first met George Romero. This is not an exaggeration. From where we are right now, you can throw a stone onto Bouquet Street where George had his apartment. And one of these days, I will go with you guys to identify the exact building. And if we have to, maybe we can introduce ourselves to the owner and maybe get access to it because I don't believe the architecture of that building would have changed. Uh, George shared, it was a large apartment that George shared uh, with Steve Zulick and an actor by the name of Raymond Lane. And the very first scene that I was in for ex uh, expostulation was filmed in that apartment building. And because it's so close to where you are, you may want to have uh, an exact geographic fix on that building and maybe add some photos of it to your, your collection. It's so gratifying to hear uh, what you all have to say about me and to see this archive. I can tell you that it, it just opens up not only memory floodgates, emotional floodgates uh, from a, a period of time in my life that uh, was long, long gone. I've often said to, when John Russo and I were teaching filmmaking classes at a small business college in Dubois, PA, impressed on them two things. One, if you have the gumption to start a project, make sure you finish it. No one will ever find your work if it ends up in a cardboard box in a garage someplace. If you start it, finish it. Even though you may feel, which as, a, as an artist, most of us feel our work isn't ever quite finished. Oh, I, I wish I could tamper with this a little bit, tamper with that a little bit. Uh, most people that I know, most people, creative people that I know would like to do one more little finishing touch Figure out when it's complete enough, and then don't be afraid to show it to people. But whatever you do, don't let it end up in a cardboard box, period, because there you'll go nowhere. The other thing that I used to remind students of is that we all, I don't care what your endeavor is, I really mean this seriously, I don't care what the endeavor is, we each make our own history every day, every single day. But those, those slivers, those daily slivers come in such narrow pieces, we don't recognize them as accomplishments. Not until you get to be 83 and you look back on, well, I guess something did good happen there. I guess that did. But that applies to every one of us, regardless of what it is that we're doing. And that is especially true, I want to say, to my grandchildren, who are both here, Cadence and Bentley. I am so proud of you guys, and I am so glad that you came here today. But remember this, every single day you you can make a difference. And if you put enough of those days together, eventually it, it comes to something hopefully good. Uh, so please remember that. Um, 
this is kind of emotional for me. Uh, <clears throat> I knew George Romero and I was friends with George Romero for 60 years. And as awkward as it sounds, I loved George Romero. Uh, we put up with one another. Uh, we didn't always see eye to eye. But my inspiration basically came from him. Um, and we, we absolutely did not have a grand plan. We were a couple of young guys trying to figure out how are we going to keep groceries on the table. It was no more complicated than that. What do we do? Well, <laughs> what do we know how to do? We didn't want to work for other people. We did want to work for ourselves. Oh, by the way, to those of you from the University of Pittsburgh, with all due respect to this university, which I have a very, very, very high regard for, <laughs> I spent in the, in the School of General Studies, I don't know if the School of General Studies is still uh, around, but I, I spent a total of 15 weeks in, in the School of General Studies. It, it just wasn't quite right for me. Uh, and that's, that's when I moved over to the other end of Oakland and went to acting school. And that's where I met George, through Rudy Ritchie. Rudy Ritchie and I were sharing a uh, dressing room uh, in a holiday comedy farce. Uh, I'll have to see if the, if the playbill is there. George, uh, <laughs> George had of this uh, adaptable creativity. And when he realized that he was going to come to a show that Rudy Ritchie, his friend, and Russ Striner, who he was going to meet that night, uh, he adapted himself that night. He showed up in a black satin cape with a red satin lining, spouting lines from Cyrano de Bergerac. <laughs> My nose, magnificent, my nose. And he did the entire opening soliloquy. <laughs> uh, uh, and that was my introduction to George. And it was, it was from then on, uh, there was a short gap. And then he asked, he called me and asked me if I wanted to be an actor in expostulations. And I thought, well, if, of course, I'll deign to be in expostulations. I'll step off of the stage and into film, which which I was so naive about. I didn't know. I literally didn't know which end of the camera you point. I was extremely naive about the process. But in the apartment on Bouquet Street was the first scene we filmed, and I was hooked. I thought. How can he take all of this and cut and paste it and make sense out of it? Well, we know now that George cut and pasted many, many, many scenes over his career and made sense of them and became one of the iconic directors of, of uh, his age. Uh, I dearly love him. I dearly learn uh, love what I learned from him and he will now have a cherished place in my house. Thank you Garf very very much. I appreciate it and I thank all of you for uh, coming to celebrate this event with me. Thank you all for coming. Um, it was um, pretty incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
country. You are the team to the emergency station.